Question number six involves differentiating a product rule. So when we differentiate this, we're going to apply our product rule. So our dy by dx is equal to, we take the derivative of the x squared, leave the e to the x minus 1 alone, plus x squared, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, derivative of minus 1 is just 0. So there's our derivative. We need to simplify this. So we end up with x squared e to the x plus 2x e to the x minus 2x as our, as our solution. So this ends up being c. So just be careful when we differentiate this. We have product rule. Ones differentiate to 0, and e to the x, we have to differentiate e to the x as an exponential function. Don't use the power rule for that. So number 7 says we have a particle moves along the x-axis, so the acceleration is given by negative 4 sine 2t. So we're asked about velocity and position. So in general, we can just say that the velocity is the antiderivative of the acceleration function. Okay, we can also say that the position function, which we'll call x in this case, is the antiderivative of the velocity function. Okay, so that's our general idea that we want to make sure we follow. We've been given some information here, some initial conditions. This initial condition is for velocity, so it's to do with this equation here when we anti-differentiate. And we've also been given an initial condition here which to do with the position functions to with this function when we anti-differentiate. So that's what I'll do, is I'm going to anti-differentiate this expression. So v of t is equal to the antiderivative of negative 4 sine of 2t dt. So the antiderivative of negative sine, and again, make sure you're careful with your negatives. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so the integral of this is going to be positive for cosine of 2t. Divide by 2, because that horizontal compression, and plus c. So we end up with v of t is equal to this expression. We're going to simplify that. But we're also going to put in, plug in the 0 to be able to solve for the c value. So when I simplify this, I get 2 cosine of 2 times 0, which is 0, plus c. So my equation looks like this. 7 is equal to cosine of 0 is 0. Sorry, cosine of 0 is 1. So we end up with cos 2 times 1 plus c, giving us a c value of 5. And again, we just be really careful with that negative. It's easy to make mistakes with that. So my v function looks now like this. v of t is equal to 2 cosine 2t plus 5. Now we move on to anti-differentiate again to generate our position function x. So I'm going to say that x of t is equal to the integral of v of t, which is 2 cosine 2t plus 5 dt. So the antiderivative of cosine is sine, so we just went, we end up with 2 sine 2t. Remember to undo that extra times 2 with the divide 2, plus 5t plus c. And this c is different than that one there. Okay, in fact, I'll maybe label that as c2 just to make sure that we're absolutely clear on that. And then... I want to solve for that C2, and I'm going to use initial condition of 0, 0. So when I plug that in, x of 0 is equal to 0, while sine of 2 times 0 
or sine of 0 is 0 plus 5 times 0 is 0 plus C2 and that makes our C2 value equal to 0. So the x function then, my x of t is sine 2t plus oops, plus 5t plus 0, so that's it. So the answer is A. For number 8, we've been given the derivative, second derivative function. So we're being asked about the original graph f. So this represents the second derivative of f. The key part that we're going to analyze here is those zeros there. And these represent zero concavity or potential inflection points. Okay, so this is what the zero on a second derivative would would mean on the original function. And I have negative second derivative, which should mean concave down here. I have positive second derivative, which means concave up. Positive second derivative, which means concave up. So I'm going to do a chart. Okay, and I'm going to do my concavity chart here. And somewhere between negative 1 and 0, you know, I'll say that's like negative point, you know, uh, let's estimate it to be 7 or something like that. The value is actually not significant. We don't really need to know that value. That represents my 0 concavity. So there's my F double prime. I have positive concavity here. I have an inflection here. And I have a positive concavity here. So I'm looking for a graph that's going to follow this shape. It has to have two inflection points here. Well, these two graphs don't seem to follow that shape. Okay? This is, first of all, negative concavity to start with. That's not wrong. That's positive, negative, but then it doesn't go back positive. Okay, so we're missing some piece there. When I look at C, the concavity is wrong, although it does have two inflections in the right spots. But the concavity is wrong because it starts with concave down where I want concave up. So when I check this one here, I have two inflections and the inflections seem to be in the right place. I have positive concavity, negative concavity, and positive concavity again. So the answer must be D.